Um, hello, everyone. Um, as Jakob mentioned, I'm Patrick. I'm one of the organizers for this EuroPython and also PyCon Italia. I have a slide at the end if you're interested in the dates for next year. Uh, but my main job is a developer advocate at Apollo GraphQL. We build tooling for GraphQL. Like you might, if you use GraphQL, you might be familiar with Apollo Client or maybe with Apollo Federation. But today, we're probably not going to see any of that. We're actually going to see another project of mine, which is Strawberry, which is something I created about maybe five years ago. Um, which is an open source uh, GraphQL library for Python. Um, and this is something I do on the side with some friends. Um, and it's being used by quite a few companies now. So before talking about um, WebSocket, I kind of wanted to do a quick introduction of, of what's GraphQL, because I want people to be on the same page when we talk about some of these things. And GraphQL is a technology that allows you to create APIs. So you can think of as an alternative to REST, uh, even if it may diff be a different use case. Um, and GraphQL works by having a schema. And this schema defines all the things that you can do with your uh, API. Has types, uh, for example, here there is a pull type, which has an ID and a title, um, and has a type called query. The query type is actually special because it's basically saying these are all the fields that you can fetch from when you do a query operation. And we're gonna see more about the operation in a second. Um, but the interesting thing of GraphQL is that um, everything is typed, so you can see there is colon, ID, exclamation mark, and that means that that field has an ID, and that field is never going to be null. Um, for example, the poll is going to return an optional poll because the poll with that ID might not exist. And when um, when use GraphQL, you can do queries like this, um, and this is basically something that's called an operation, and the operation type is query, and you're basically here telling I want to fetch the poll with ID one, and I want to get the ID and the title for that uh, for that specific poll. And like as an, in, instead of having multiple endpoints in, in GraphQL, you only have one where you send a document like this, and then that document is actually going to go and uh, basically call the function that you define for fetching the default poll. So like, I just wanted to quickly show you a demo of this because I think it's um, like seeing um, in action is probably easier to understand. So I do have a, like a small um, uh, server using uh, Strawberry, and I'm also using FastAPI as the uh, application server. Uh, so this should run here. Um, when, when you open this, um, the slash GraphQL endpoint, by default you get, um, if you open in the browser, you get an interface that's called graphical, and it's a graphical interface to GraphQL, and it allows you to basically explore your GraphQL schema and also try it. So for example, here, if I remove all of this, I can do an operation called query, and then I can get, for example, a poll. And you can see everything is auto-completing because there's a schema, and all these information are coming from that specific schema. Um, and you can see here, I can pass that ID. I need to remove that. And here, you can also see all the fields that we can get for um, this specific uh, object type. So for example, I can get the question, and then we can also get a list of answers, and for every single answer, I can get the text and maybe the votes. Um, this, if I run this, um, this is gonna go to the server, it's gonna fetch the data, and let me check if I'm on the right branch. Yes, okay, that, that's, uh, that's working. So. Um, we can see that the shape of the, the result is exactly the same shape of what I'm basically asking here. So if I remove, for example, answer, and I run this again, it's only gonna return me the question. Um, and there's also different uh, types here we, that we, we're gonna see those later in a second. Let me just switch this. Cool. Um, so let's see how we can implement a that schema that we've seen using a strawberry. Um, and this is, this is a GraphQL schema, and it defines everything that you have there. And if you kind of squint your eyes a bit, this kind of looks like you know, Python data classes. So if we change type to class, it's already starting looking more like Python. And if we remove the curly braces, it's almost exactly Python, with a couple of exceptions. We're using types that don't exist in Python, like ID and string. We're also using the exclamation mark that doesn't exist. And finally, there's a bit of weird syntax there for defining the arguments. Um, so let's fix those. So we change the types to be survey ID for ID, string for, uh, for the string, oh, str for the string, and then for the pull, you're actually saying pull or none, because 
like the default is kind of op the opposite. Like in GraphQL, everything is nullable by default. In Python, it's not. Um, and I removed the ID for now uh, because I would make this slide a bit more complex. But uh, it's we basically need to attach a Python function, and server is going to read the arguments from the function. But I'll, I'll show you the code in a bit, so uh, that's going to make more sense. And finally, we use the survey type decorator to basically convert this class into a GraphQL type. And this is almost like doing a data class. Uh, if you're familiar with that, it's going to create constructors, it's going to create uh, equality methods and things like that. But it's also going to add some metadata to the class so we can create a schema from, this, uh, from the query. Cool. But we are here for subscription, so let me kind of talk about that. And I think it's important to mention that GraphQL supports multiple operation type. We've seen um, how to do a query, uh, which is like this. So we have a query on the right, um, which is, you know, I'm saying I want to fetch the poll with ID 1. And then on the left is like the, the schema that you would uh, write to, to make this query happen. Um, and if you're familiar with REST, queries are basically the replacement for, for GET requests. But then you also have mutations, uh, which are basically a way to do anything that side effects, like creating a poll, uh, deleting a poll, and so on. Like in HTTP, um, you would have delete, post, put, and patch. And one thing to notice here is that the syntax is almost, it's basically the same. Like there is not a lot of difference. Like the main difference is the fact that on the right you're doing mutation instead of, instead of query. So I can see query here and mutation here. And this is basically telling uh, the GraphQL server which one of the entry points you want to fetch. So instead of going from the type query, you're going through the type mutation. And this is uh, the fact that there is two um, uh, kind of entry point, like two operation types, is because like this is telling the developers that this operation is going to is going to do side effects. But there's also some bit of semantic differences in the actual execution of GraphQL, which we're not going to go into details today. But yeah, the most interesting uh, operation type is actually subscription, at least for this talk. And again, this is very, very similar to what we had before. So we define a field where, in this case, we're saying, I want to fetch, uh, I want to get an update for a poll based on that ID. Uh, and then the sub sub subscription looks the same. Um, the main difference of this is that this doesn't really return just one value. It basically returns a, I guess you can think of as a stream of values. So every time there is an update, the server is going to ping you the update back to you. Um, yeah. So now that we know how sub subscription work, or at least how to implement the schema for this, let's actually think about you know, what we should use sub subscription for. So there is there's quite a few use cases which are really interesting. There's probably more than the one I'm going to mention here. Um, but there's also some of these use cases might be solved by other features of GraphQL that are coming soon. So we're also going to talk about the alternatives. So when you talk about wet sockets, you cannot really talk um, about chat apps. It's, it's always about that. Like There is always a, a demo with, with chat. Um, and yeah, WebSocket are really good, uh, or subscription are really good for that because you basically need to send a, you know, sending a message and then receiving a message back. And this this communication that's constantly happening between your client and your server. Then there's also social media feeds, like for example, Twitter. If you scroll down, at some point you're gonna get like a bubble at the top and say, oh, there is new tweets, and that could be implemented with subscriptions. Um, Another one is in-app notification, so you can have an app running and you can receive messages every time there is something happening somewhere else. And then the one I think it's quite cool is live data, and probably might also be not the right thing for, for a subscription, but we'll see that in a moment. And live data you can think of, for example, if you're watching a game, you can have the results of the game updating in real time using a sub subscription, for example. And finally, collaborative application. This is probably, I never implemented this, but something you could definitely do with subscription. Uh, but it's probably going to get complicated because you have to do conflict resolution if you know there's multiple people adding the same thing at the same time. Um, cool. Now that we know some of the use cases, and uh, it would be interesting also to chat with you about some of the other use cases, let's see an example of uh, subscription. So I'm going to change screen again. Um, I. I've implemented a front end to this um, API. So you can see here, I, I was doing some operation to create a poll, to get a poll, to vote, and also to do the subscription. Um, we could see all of that here, but it gets a bit boring. So um, I'm just going to spin up the front end and show you that. 
The front end is built using Next.js and React, uh, but it doesn't matter too much because the clients, um, uh, there's clients for almost any framework on um, like any modern front end framework. Cool. Uh, let me refresh this. As you can see, I'm going to localhost 3000 slash the poll ID. And this is basically the app. It's telling, uh, it's telling the title of the question, um, and then it's giving you the total votes and the, uh, the answers. <clears throat> so once I click on one of this, um, you know, this is going to update. And I made so that you can uh, click multiple times so you can see that the numbers are changing. Um, this is already quite interesting of the way it works. There's no there's not really a line of code that's actually updating this, this, this data here. It's all done by using GraphQL, but um, I don't know if we will have time to see that. I think the more interesting part is to actually see um, a subscription in action. So this page, one, once it, it loads, is actually going to do a subscription to the server. And when there is an update, it's going to update the, the page automatically. So you can see here that once I click, I wait a bit of time, and it's actually uh, you know, updating the other page um, and, and vice versa. There's one thing to note here, you've probably seen it, that the update is actually taking a couple of seconds. And this is because I implemented this in a um, no optimal way, mostly because I wanted to show you how you could do uh, polling on the server, which could be useful in some cases if you have an API that doesn't give you um, like hooks to kind of you know, send messages between things. So um, let me show you that. Um, as I mentioned, I am using FastAPI. But FastAPI, like this is a FastAPI, it's pretty limited. There's only this. I'm um, just, oops. I'm just setting the, basically the, uh, the GraphQL app here. Uh, and then, of course, and that, that's pretty much it. Um, oh, one more thing. I'm using HDB because I wanted to try. So if you see anything weird with how I fetch data, it's because of that, because I don't know how to use it yet. Um, but yeah, all the impor important things are happening inside the, uh, the schema here. So. We can see that there is uh, things that are similar to what we kind of were discussing before. So there is like a bunch of types, a query. Uh, there's also an input type, which is like um, it's like an object type but for receiving data. Um, but then this is where you know everything actually happens. So we have a schema here, which is basically saying uh, I'm creating a GraphQL schema with these three uh, root types: query, mutation, and subscription. Um, yeah, let me start with maybe, I'll show you the poll quickly, but this is basically what we've seen at the beginning with just a couple of additional fields. The so strawberry is using the type ins to, to basically understand what type this GraphQL field should be. Uh, this is some utility method I'm using to convert from a database result to a uh, poll type. But that, again, doesn't matter for this talk. Um, yeah, and then we have the query here. Like You can see where things the reason why I didn't put that into the slide because it was getting a bit messy. Um, I'm using a different syntax than just declaring the field. I'm using the survey field decorator on this method, um, which is basically saying, create me a field from, um, from this method and put a, um, use this name and this return type as the types of the field and then use the arguments to create the GraphQL field. So if we go back to our schema here, we can see that when I click on query, there is a poll with this ID. And this is very similar to what we have in Python, with the exception of self and info. Info, um, it's, it's basically something that contains a request and some information about the uh, GraphQL operation that's happening. Um, but yeah, then I'm getting the poll from database. If there is one, I'm returning, otherwise I'm returning none. And that's pretty much what I'm doing in, in here. Um, mutation is pretty, pretty much the same. Uh, create poll accepts an input, and then it creates a poll uh, with that input, and then it returns it to our uh, front end. And here where things get more interesting, so this is the vote um, well function. This is what I'm calling when I click on a answer. And you can see here, uh, again, apart from some weirdness I'm doing for uh, storing the data, I'm just incrementing one counter on database, and then I'm returning the poll here. And as you can see, there is nothing here really telling my server that there's been a vote happening. Like, there's, it's not really telling that you know the poll has been updated. Um, and this is why I wanted to show you 
um, how to do a subscription using kind of polling mechanism. So here we have the sub subscription. I mean, the code is similar to what we've seen before. Uh, so it's accept an ID and then returns an async generator. Async generator basically tells Strawberry that this subscription is going to return uh, a stream of poll. And then I'm basically doing an infinite loop. Uh, and I'm trying to return a poll every two seconds. Um, and I think this, this kind of pattern is quite uh, powerful if you have something that you know it's going to update quite often, but you don't have a mechanism to receive the updates. Um, like for example, like we, at work, we, we did a demo with Spotify, and we were using the playback status, like the song that you're playing and the current time, uh, and we didn't have a way to receive that, so we were just pulling the API like, like this. But I do have a better demo of this, so let me actually switch that. Um, so I've done a demo using Broadcaster, which is a PubSub library, uh, I think from Tom Christie, if I remember correctly. And it has a very nice API and allows you to do communication between multiple things in just a few lines of code. Um, and in this case, I'm using Redis as the message queue. So it's going to, when I do a vote, I'm going to send a message to Redis. And then I'm going to listen for the message from Redis. So let me, let me start that. <coughs> Okay, so Redis is running. I'm gonna refresh this page here. Well, both of them, so. Okay, so now you can see when, when I click, that's updating almost in real time, uh, which is much better. Uh, and it's what I guess you will usually do um, uh, when you work with subscriptions. So there is always gonna be like some sort of pub sub. So something happens somewhere and then it sends a message to a queue and then uh, a listener, a subscriber receives that message. And in terms of the code, let me fold everything here. The, the mutation is almost the same with the exception of I'm getting this broadcast um, um, object from, from the context. And then before returning the poll, I'm actually gonna publish a message to the channel um, saying, oh, there's been an update to this poll. And the way I'm identifying the poll is just by putting the ID inside the channel. Um, so you, you can only have, you have subscribers that subscribe only to a specific poll change. So you don't get a lot of messages. Um, and finally, in the subscription, I'm changing things a bit. And I'm using, again, broadcast to basically subscribe to this, this channel and then listen to like messages on the channel. and. Once there is an, a message, I'm just going to fetch the poll from the database and then return it. Um, this could be also optimized. Maybe I could send the whole poll via, um, via the channel, but uh, that, this was a quick way of doing it. Um, yeah. Cool. And finally, the last thing I wanted to show you is how this actually works in practice. So when I go in my network tab, if I refresh this, uh, you can see that there is a web socket connection being done by GraphQL. I'm going to make this a bit smaller. Um, and you can see there are some messages here. Or maybe I'll put this at the bottom. It's probably easier to read. Um, so the first thing I'm doing when I connect to a GraphQL server, I'm sending an init to, to say I want to connect. Then the server responds, OK, that's fine. Uh, and finally, I send the actual subscription. So here you can see that I'm sending the variables and I'm sending the query, um, which is the subscription I want to do. So this is how the server is going to know what to do. And if I click here, we can see that there is some messages coming in uh, for the update. So you can see that there is all the data that we asked to fetch. Uh, so this is going to happen every time there is a new update. Oh, don't need this. Cool. Um, yeah, before talking about some, some other things, I think it's important to think, uh, to talk about schema design. And schema design is something that's very important in GraphQL. Like usually you won't really do an, an API that ex reflects exactly what you have in, on, on your database. Um, GraphQL is really, it really should be done as a kind of feature case uh, driven. So if you need, need to do some specific thing on your front end or your client, you should create a uh, operation dedicated to that. Because um, that's going to make your, your schema uh, be a bit more useful uh, for, your, for your clients. 
And this is also quite important with subscription because subscriptions are a bit heavy on, on, um, on, uh, on your server uh, because it's, they're using WebSockets. And that's the asterisk there. Like if you do subscription web WebSockets, um, th there's going to be a connection to your backend um, and that's going to stay alive until either the backend crashes or the front end closes the page. Um, and that makes it makes things a bit more difficult to scale because you cannot even use things like serverless because you have to have a connection always open. Um, there is some um, kind of solution to this, like some gateways that you could use, but like, you know, plain Python is not the best thing at the moment. Uh, but hopefully we can make it better. But on top of that, I think we should kind of make, we, we should make sure that we have a good use case for them. Like, for example, this poll here example that I showed you, does it really need to have real time data updates? It's not a poll that, you know, a lot of people are gonna work with, or for example, like a common thing to say, well, I can make so that on my blog post, I'm gonna receive a, I'm gonna subscribe to every new comment, and so I get, you know, new comments immediately. But unless your blog post is quite, you know, quite viral, you don't really need to update things in real time. So it's definitely, it's, um, you definitely need to think about, you know, does it make sense to do a subscription for my specific use case? And, I, do, I want to spend a bit of time on the alternatives um, because one thing um, that you could do, you know, that's kind of cheap way of doing real-time data or like updates is like having maybe polling. This is very easy to implement on the client because like most of the libraries have just like a flag where you can say, oh, refresh this data every second and that's gonna update everything, which is quite nice and it works in most of the cases. Um, but again, be careful with this because you might, you know, if you have a lot of users, you're doing a lot of requests, uh, which is uh, not ideal in some cases. Um, and then there is service and events. So this is an alternative protocol to WebSocket, which is a lighter weight, um, but unfortunately it's not yet available in any Python library. So this is something I wanted to implement for this talk, but I got quite busy with other things. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be too difficult to implement and this is gonna make things a bit better because you have a protocol that's lighter weight, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna feed more use cases because like, usually when you do a subscription, you don't wanna send you know, message back and forth, you just need to have a, a information from the server. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in this, I'm hosting a sprint, uh, we could chat about working on some of this. And then as an alternative, there's also the foreign stream. These are quite different, a bit different from subscription, but they also, are in the realm of you know, incremental data delivery. So let's take a look at Defer first. If you're not familiar with um, directives or GraphQL in general, the add Defer is a directive. It's basically changing how the, this operation should kind of behave on the server. And so what I'm saying here, I wanna fetch the poll uh, with that ID, with the ID and title, and I also wanna fetch the answer but I don't really care about the answer being present on the first response. So the server is gonna send you a first response like this, and then it's gonna give you the answer as soon as they're ready. Um, and this works with using multi-part transform, so it's gonna send you a stream until there is, uh, there is any updates. And I think this is really powerful and really useful because this, this is something that you would do maybe with two queries instead of one uh, in your page. For example, like if, if you talk about the um, the blog post, like if you have a blog post, we also wanna show the comments, but the comments are less important because you usually read it from the top, you read the, the content. And so you could say, I wanna fetch the content of the blog post and the comments, but the comments can come later, so you can defer them. Um, and then there's also stream, um, the stream directive, which works in a similar way, but it's actually um, saying, I wanna receive a stream of uh, these comments. So. For example, here, this will be the first response, and then the stream is gonna keep streaming data until it's, it's, it's over. Um, I haven't seen many use cases of this, like most people that I talk with are pretty really excited about Defer. I've seen a good use case for stream, which is creating a chat application like uh, ChatGPT, where you send a message and then it's streaming a bunch of characters one at a time. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I haven't seen people working with this at the moment. And also one of the reasons is that this um, is not available in the official GraphQL spec. Uh, and I feel like I'm giving you bad news now. But this has been going on for, like the implementation of this in the spec has been going on for like two years, I think, or even more. Um, but 
luckily, like people have started working on this, and there is an alpha in GraphQL Core, which is the library that uh, all the Python implementation of GraphQL are using. And we did an experiment with this, and it's actually working with Strawberry. You just need to do a couple of changes. And so if you want to take a look at that, if you want to contribute it, um, uh, I'll be at the sprints again. Um, but yeah, this should, coming, should be coming soon, uh, which I'm really excited. And then finally, we have this other directive. Uh, I'm going to tell you already, it's not in the spec yet. Uh, but I think this, this is what people wanted subscription to be. So this is a directive that's basically telling I want to do this query also when I receive updates. And so a server that's implementing this uh, is basically going to essentiate maybe a server send event stream, and it's going to you know, give you updates uh, every time there is uh, an update on the pool. And I think the mechanism for sending the, the updates is going to be dissimilar to what we've done with the subscription, but just with a much nicer API. Uh, and again, this is not available in the spec. Um, but it would be interesting to try and implement this and see what we can do. Uh, I haven't read, read the, disc, the, the conversation on why this is not in the, yet in the spec. Uh, there's probably some thing related to probably performance because you know, listening to a lot of things uh, is going to be expensive. So, see. So, uh, I wanted to do a quick recap of this of how you implement the subscription using. Um, using Strawberry and the broadcast library. So as we've seen before, basically when I create a subscription, I actually subscribe into a channel from, from this library. Um, and then every time there is a new event, I send the data back to the, to the user. And then in, um, in the vote, so every time there is an update, I basically publish a message on that channel. And that's going to be received by the sub subscription that we've seen there. And the kind of architecture it looks like this. So, uh, in my case, I'm using Redis. There's a GraphQL um, server that's going to receive messages from Redis, sending back to the Pulse application that we've seen. And I'm using Postgres as my database, uh, or well, HDB in this case. Um, that's pretty much like the standard architecture of this. Um, um, there's definitely some, some different ways of implementing this also. I do have some ideas on making some of these things better, because you could have a sub subscription that doesn't really have any code, because I can imagine if you do something like this quite often, uh, we can have maybe like a different decorator that say, give me a subscription updates on this channel and return this information, for example. Um, that's something we think I'm going to experiment next. And even here, for example, instead of having the publish here, I could have a mutation, uh, a parameter on the mutation, and so say send a message when the mutation is done. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we get that soon. So we don't have a lot of time, exactly. <laughs> we don't have a lot of time, so um, do you have any questions? Happy to take them. I'm going to be in the sprints as well. I'm going to be around, so uh, definitely happy to chat about this and GraphQL in general. So thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Um, does anyone have any questions? No? Right. Thanks, Patrick, for the talk, and great to see that the demo goals were with you today. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, PyCon, oh, there's a question there, so. Yeah. Um, thanks for the talk, really informative. Um, I don't know much about <coughs> GraphQL, but I was wondering if <coughs> you can combine queries and mutations, or do you need some sort of a client code to, um, for example, do a mutation for a query, or um, like many mutations at once, basically? Yeah, that's a very good question. So the question is if you can combine query and mutation, and also if you can do multiple mutation at once, uh, right? Um, yes, so this is where the the spec, um, well, there's some semantic differences between uh, queries and subscription. So queries, definitely you can do, uh, like you can do as many as you want. You can even fetch the same thing multiple times, uh, maybe with an alias. Um, and the server is gonna actually execute them in, in parallel, while in the mutation case, it's actually gonna execute one after the other because uh, if one fails, you probably don't want the other ones to continue happening. So you can do multiple things at once. And in terms of doing um, like a, a mutation and a query at the same time, you cannot do that. Uh, but there is a pattern of, um, I've seen some people doing query like this here, 
and this would allow you to actually also do a query while you do the mutation. Um, um, which I don't, I don't know if I like, but like usually what you, what you do with, with mutation and queries, like you return exactly the data that's needed to update the page. Um, and especially if you use clients like Apollo Client, Oracle, um, the fact that you use an ID and the, pull t the type of the, this operation, for example, let me show you this. Um, oh, okay. Um, yeah, we can chat about this in a second, yeah. Uh, Thank you again. We're, we're out of time. We don't have time for more questions. Thank you again, Patrick. Uh, <laughs>